I was an amateur. I didn't always hit it as far as I do today. And just like you, I was constantly trying to improve. I chose Titleist then for the same reasons I do now. The new Pro V1 and Pro V1X. Choose the best for your game. Well, Matt, it's great to have you back here. Uh, you know, a destination of a great victory for you. You're back. Now, this is your club, isn't it? This it is. is your home club, and your teacher is here, yep. I believe. So it all could come together again this week? Uh, that's why I'm here. Um, yeah. It was very disappointing not to be able to play last year and defend my title, but circumstances I put myself in made me have to choose, make a decision, and I made a decision, which was a very tough one to make. But uh, now I'm back here. I'm happy to be back here, and uh, it's good to be back on my home course here in Australia and I was just on the range with Gary then doing some work. Mm. And how long have you been back home preparing for this tournament? Uh, I got back yesterday so I didn't, uh, <laughs> I haven't had much time time off. I had last week off, I didn't, I played in Cancun two weeks ago so I played last and had last week off and pretty tired but I'll be, I'll be ready to go come Thursday. And you're going to have a practice round after we've finished here with Jordan? Yeah, we did it uh, in 15 when I won with uh, my brother, myself and Jordan. And we're going to do it again this year with uh, Kramer Hickok as well. So I'm sure we'll have some fun out there the n for nine holes. Terrific. I'm sure you'll have a great crowd. Questions, please, from the floor. <coughs> Mark, thank you. <coughs> Matt, you always, you always play well after you see Gary, it seems like. Uh, is that, how big a factor is that for you still? Um, <laughs> I've thought about that lately and I haven't probably played as well as I normally do after seeing him. Um, I'm always hitting it good, but I'm expecting to play well this week. Uh, in the past, it has helped a lot when he's there just to give me a, probably just gives me more confidence that what I'm doing is working and um, confidence is huge for a golfer. So anytime a golfer is very confident, they're going to play well normally. So speaking of that confidence, you know, you played a, a fantastic last round in that, the web finals uh, when it mattered most that must have really been important to you this year coming now it was um yeah that to play the way i did in 16 and 17 i think um was not typical of myself uh and then to lose my card but to get it back at the web finals again was uh it was good um i didn't want to have to rely on sponsor exemptions and minimal starts again this year on tour um and now that i got my full card back i can select a schedule which is nice and play courses I want and I did play very well that last round so it gave me some confidence and I'm looking forward to uh, this year coming up. You still feel like you when you get into that position like you were here a couple of years ago and you know previously in Houston or whatever that when you put yourself in that position you've, you've got more than what it takes? Yes yeah uh, I think every golfer would but uh, I do I'm a aggressive golfer by nature and that probably hurt me the last round I was here in 15. Um, but I like to take chances and that sometimes pays off, sometimes it doesn't. But I think uh, the more chances you give yourself, the better you are in those situations. And I've given myself a few of those chances and I've capitalised a couple of times now. Any more questions? <clears throat> How much of an advantage is that you know this course backwards? I know you won here two years ago, but, you know... Um, I would, I was telling, oh, I just did an interview earlier and I would say I would have known the course much better before Nicholas came in seven years ago and did the redesign. Um, the greens I don't really know now, they're totally, every green's different now. Um, spots, lines off the tee are pretty much the same which makes things comfortable, you know where I can miss it and where not to miss it but it's a, it's, it's a very comfortable course for me just to walk on and play, I could do it with my eyes closed, off the tee. On the greens, it's a little different now, but uh, no, I'm very comfortable out here, especially when it blows, because I know how heavy the wind blows and how much it can affect the ball on this golf course, because I've played it so much. Talking about that confidence, you said you're confident, you're comfortable out there. Obviously, that's, that's going to be a big, big help coming into this competition. Yes. Uh, every golfer is that plays well he's going to be confident um it's going to give you confidence to hit shots at pins take take certain shots on um 
And you're going to need that against a great field out here. And you've got Jason Day playing this week. You've got Jordan Spieth. You've got multiple players that have won on tour out here this week. And if you're a little off or you're struggling a little, it's, uh, you're not going to be able to compete. And tell us about those players. You're, you're hitting out with, um, with Jordan. It's fantastic to see him out here. It is. I, it's great to see him come back here every year and play. Um, I know he loves it. We might have to give him Australian citizenship, citizenship soon. Um, but, yeah, no, I have, I've played with Jordan now since... I don't know when his first year on tour was, 15 or 14, but I've played with him. I've been friends with him since then, and uh, he's just a, just a great guy that uh, very down to earth, hasn't changed at all with all the uh, success he's had. So I just, uh, he's a really good guy. Just when you have a field with the likes of Spieth and Day in it, um, obviously Jason wasn't here, Dean, but... Does it elevate your game to a different level, even psychologically before the first round? You know you're going to have to produce the best stuff that you'd have to produce anywhere in the world, I guess. Oh, without question. Um, I do it week in and week out on tour every, anyway, so to have them here is uh, you definitely know you have to play well and I want to play well and perform in front of friends, friends and family. So I, so I think that would be more... Uh, for a reason for me to play well just in front of friends and family more so than playing against Jordan and um, Jason and with my brother in the field this week I don't want to lose to him so mm -hmm. every time he's played with me I've played pretty well I was leading the PGA championship when Jason won and I won here in 15 when my brother was playing as well so he's a good omen for me what's it like to walk back in the gates face on the poster and you know when you were last year you had 5,000 people slapping you on the back and you know yeah. just a manic couple of days yeah, it's, uh, it's great. Uh, it's not something I have got to experience too often, so um, it's a nice experience, especially to do it on your home golf club with so many friends and family and members here. Uh, it's, a, it's a comfortable place, and it's something I will always remember doing in 15 um, and something I'd love to do again. Can I ask you a totally different question? Mike Davis from the USGA overnight was quoted as saying, you know, they're considering bifurcation and ball length. Have you got a view on the amateur or the, you know, the elite game versus the club game? Um, well, the, uh, there we're much more athletes coming out into the golf world now. The bigger, the stronger, they're going to swing the club faster, they're going to hit the ball further. Um, I think it's a byproduct of how much stronger and how much more ath athletic golfers are, now, as are nowadays as well because of what Tiger did for the game with his working out and his um, work ethic has made golfers stronger, fitter, and they're going to hit it further with the ball speed, with the speed they're hitting a swing a golf club at. Do we need to control it? <laughs> I, I find it funny that Tiger came out now and said that they need to change the ball. Um, eh, it's, it's going to be a tough one. I don't know how they do it. Um, I don't think they need to build longer golf courses. I'd rather build a shorter golf course and make it tighter, like Hilton Head where we play... I don't think lengthening golf courses, because if you lengthen it, then you only play into a long hitter's hands. It's, it limits the field. Um, so I, it's tough for me to say. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Martin? Matty, uh, same, same topic. Um, I'm just wondering how the Oz plays for you now, given that you grew up and played here. How does it play now? For instance, even on the first hole, you know, with the bunkers down the right there, are they kind of not in play anymore, or depending on the wind, or what sort of clubs are you hitting into? You know, always people always talk about number eight being a, a pretty tough par four, but, you know, what are you hitting into 18, for instance? Are you always going for the green, that kind of thing? Yeah, um, number one, if you play it, when you play here as a member, you play it off the back tee, so those bunkers are definitely in play. I don't think they are... If it's into the wind a little, they will be, but I don't think they will be, if I play it today, I don't think they will be off the tee we play from. But when we do play it here as, uh, with the members, it's a par five as well. So playing it as a par four, it would be a bit too long of a par four from that back tee. Number eight, they move the tee back 30 yards from where it was, so it's always, if you get that northerly wind, it's a brood of a hole. Um, 16... We're not playing the back tee this year because I think the tee's out of commission. Um, that, that's, that's always been a, a longer hole, but I think nowadays it plays shorter than it used to when I was first out here. Mate, you mentioned the wind before. When it gets up, how much of... Like, does the course change entirely? Um, 
and and you know how much advantage just having that knowledge of that wind do you think it you do, it does especially when it's i th i find the toughest wind out here would be the southerly for me personally um when you play nine into the wind 10 into the wind 12 into the wind 17 into the wind um they get they get very difficult um and then 14, even though it's a par, f par five, it still becomes a difficult hole. But I think since, because I've been here since I was 15, I've only known playing this course in the wind. It always seems to blow here. Um, so it's a, it's a big advantage, I think. That's the, the more the wind blows here, I think the better it would be for me. And I think that showed last year in the first round where I, sh I think I shot 67 or 66 in the first round. Uh, where I think I was low by three or four in the afternoon round. So... Um, I think that's one of the biggest advantages I would have. And, and unfortunately, Jordan put on a, a exhibition here when he won in the wind in the last round. So, you know, there's yes. that to deal with as well. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's what he did that year was pretty amazing. I wasn't here playing that year, so but from what I heard, it was playing pretty difficult. How much longer do you plan to stay in Australia after this week? Are you going straight back to the States? No, no I'm actually playing the PGA next week for mm. the first time in five or six years uh, and then I'll be here the week after that with mum and dad and then I'll fly back to America on the, uh, the 8th of December. That's terrific. Any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? Otherwise, thank you for coming in and we hope to see you during the week. Thank you very much. Thank you.